Hi, this is Don McKenzie with Great Commission Church, and I'd like to welcome you to our study on the New Covenant in Hebrews chapter 8, verses 6 through 13. This is part 4. Now, we concluded part 3 by asking, what is so different about the New Covenant that the Lord would make such a big deal to say it will not be like the Old Covenant with Israel that was mediated by Moses. To understand the difference, we need to understand two basic types of covenants or agreements or contracts, because there are two basic types. Now remember, a covenant is a contract or agreement between at least two parties. It can be a conditional contract or an unconditional contract. A conditional covenant requires both parties to agree to do something for each other. If not, the covenant is broken or unfulfilled. So if you do your part and if I do my part, then we fulfill our agreement. A conditional covenant has at least two ifs or conditions built in. One for each party, if and if. A conditional contract is usually phrased as an if-then clause. If you do this, then I will do that. Now here's an example. If you give me $8, then I'll give you a delicious hamburger. Now this has two ifs in it, although you don't see them. If you give me $8 and if I give you a delicious hamburger, we have a, success, a successfully completed deal. That is a conditional contract. An unconditional covenant is an agreement between two parties, but only one party has an if clause in the contract. And it can still be expressed as an if-then, but technically there is only one if. That means only one party in the covenant must do something. The other party does not have to perform or do anything in order to receive the, the benefits that are promised in the agreement or covenant. Here's an example. When I die, then I will give you $100,000. Now that's a classic life insurance policy. See, this promise only has one condition in it. If the first person dies, the second person gets $100,000. Now we all know that this second person is called the beneficiary and they do nothing, they do not have to perform, but if the first party performs, then they get to receive the benefit of the promise. Now, is it fair to say that a life insurance contract is not according to or like the hamburger contract? Well, they're both contracts and they both have if then clauses, but the difference is that one is unconditional and the other is conditional. Well, what about the Mosaic covenant? Was it a conditional or an unconditional covenant. This is critically important to understand because verse nine said the new covenant is not like the Mosaic covenant. So understanding the difference between a conditional and an unconditional covenant is the key to understanding verse nine and really understanding the new covenant. All right, let's briefly examine the Mosaic Covenant and find the answer to our question as to whether it is conditional or unconditional. And the answer is in Exodus 19, verses 3 through 8. And Moses went up to God, and the Lord called to him from the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob, and tell the children of Israel, You have seen what I did to the Egyptians, and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now, therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, then you shall be a special treasure to me above all people, for all the earth is mine. All right. 
verse five lays out the conditions of this Mosaic covenant. And I want to zoom in on verse five and see if there's an if then clause in this covenant. Well, we see right off the bat that there is an if for Israel, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant. Next, we see a then clause. Then you shall be a special treasure to me above all people. If Israel obeys, then God will reward. This agreement is stated positively, as most contracts are. If, then, if you obey, I will then give you something in return. The negative is also true. If you do not obey me, you will not be a special treasure to me above all people. And really, this is like the hamburger contract. The Mosaic Covenant is a classic conditional covenant. If the people obey, and if God gives them the benefits that he promised, then we have a successful, fulfilled agreement or covenant. Each must perform as agreed in the covenant, or it is broken and unfulfilled. A conditional covenant. Now remember, this conditional covenant was sealed or signed in blood. That meant there were severe penalties for not living up to the conditions of this covenant. All right, now let's go back to verses 8 and 9 in Hebrews 8. <clears throat> the new covenant will not be according to or like the covenant, which we now know is the law of Moses. And why is that? Why will the new covenant be different? Well, the answer to that is at the beginning of verse 8, which I'm not showing here, and at the end of verse 9. Let's look at it. Now, the author of Hebrews summarizes in verse 8 what the Lord prophesied and said through Jeremiah, <clears throat> which is shown at the end of verse 9. And each clause starts with the word, because. Why does there have to be a new covenant? Because, says the Lord in verse 9, they did not continue in my covenant. See, the covenant required them to fully and continually obey the Lord's laws in the covenant, and they did not do this. So in verse 8, the author of Hebrews is summarizing what the Lord said in Jeremiah, and he says that the Lord found fault with them. Why? Because they did not continue in the Lord's covenant. All right, so what's the problem here? Well, a blind man could see it. They did not perform or live up to their end of the deal. So the Lord, he says, disregarded them or rejected them because they failed to ever fully and continually do their part. Their blessings and curses were conditional. Obey me and be blessed. Disobey and be cursed. So is the new covenant unconditional? Is that the way that it's different and not according to the covenant, which we know is the Mosaic covenant? Well, that is the paramount question. And we're going to look at verses 10, 11, and 12 in our next session, because those verses answer this question, is the new covenant unconditional? All right, we'll look at that uh, later. Thanks for watching part four. I hope you'll tune in to part five.